Hi, and thanks for logging on to the Daily Dvar Halacha. And here's a brand new Halacha for you, and it's for Sunday, the 8th day of November. Here we go. If you wanted to pour water from a hot kettle of water into your chalant on Shabbos, because it looks like the chalant is drying out and it needs some water, there's an issue here, because when you hold the kettle over the chalant and pour the hot water in, some meat... Um, not smoke, some meat steam is going to come up out of the chalent pot and affect, possibly affect the water in the kettle or the kettle itself. And it's just best to try not to get into that mess um, if possible. The better way to do it is to pour the hot water from the kettle into a cup and then pour from that cup into the chalent. Make sure that you're not uh, getting into any other halachic problems of cooking, etc. But assuming that you're pouring the right way into a container that you're allowed to pour into on Shabbos, we're just dealing with the milk and meat problem. So best to try to not that there's any milk here, but we want to make sure that your 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 coffee, your water holder, your hot water kettle is not going to become flaschic through the steam of the chalent or whatever. If you have a coffee maker that you used for dairy coffee grinds, so that should not be used for coffee in a meat cup, in, in a flaschic cup, because of course the coffee grinder use, was used for some dairy coffee grinds, if it was. If it's possible, when you're storing liquids, let's say milk or something, and you want to store it cold in a container, and it's a dry, clean container, and you're just going to pour the milk in there, um, it's best to not have it be stored there for 24 hours or more, because if those liquids are then going to, well, let's say it's like this. Uh, I didn't say that exactly right. I mean if it's a milk container. Okay, a milk container will then hold some apple juice in it, and that apple juice is going to get poured into some meat uh, stuff. The fact that that uh, apple juice sat in a milk container for 24 hours or more makes it that some of the milkiness of that vessel could have gotten into that apple juice, and we, we, we would try. It's better not to have that apple juice then poured into meat because it's been sitting for 24 hours in a in a container that was milchix. Some people avoid using a cookie shaper. You know, that's the little star thing that you press into the dough. Oh, you can use them. That's totally fine to use them. But if it's with a dough that somehow is a dairy cookie dough, then it's a problem because you may end up not cleaning it well. It may end up then used, be used for power of cookies. So it's best to try to, uh, I don't know, have either set aside a special cookie shaper that's going to be used with dairy dough or don't use your power of cookie shaper with your dairy dough in the kitchen. And lastly, if you have a cork bottle stopper, um, it's not good to have that cork bottle stopper to go back and forth between a dairy container and a meat container because cork is very absorbent and uh, you can't be swapping that back and forth from milk bottles to flesh bottles. You're going to get into all kinds of problems. Thanks for logging on and log on again tomorrow for more. Bye-bye.